What's going on, folks? Welcome to another New York Giants video. And in this video, I'm going to discuss multiple things that are happening with Big Blue today. First off, some minor transactions. The New York Giants re-signed long snapper Casey Kreider and cornerback Jaron Williams. Now, Casey Kreider has been the long snapper for the, for the past two seasons. When the Giants released Riley Dixon, I wasn't so sure what that meant for Casey Kreider, being that they played together not just in New York, but in Denver as well. Kreider being a former pro bowler, I'm happy he's back. And I'm sure that'll probably be around a veteran minimum deal. But Casey Kreider is a very important piece to this team. And Jaron Williams, who wound up playing six games for the Giants last season, starting two due to all the injuries. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens with that. And the Giants did not tender offensive lineman Kyle Murphy and quarterback Jake Fromm, which I know a lot of people are excited about. Jake Fromm was not very successful when put into relief of Mike Lennon and Daniel Jones this season. But, you know, a lot of people were desperate and a lot of people were saying, you know what, give the kid a chance. You know, he really wasn't set up to succeed here in New York. So I wish Jake Fromm the best elsewhere. And Kyle Murphy was an exclusive rights free agent who missed all of 2021 with an ankle injury. So unfortunately, Murphy, who showed some promise as an undrafted rookie free agent in 2020, will not stick around for a third season with Big Blue. Now, before I get into the two big topics for today, folks, remember to follow us on all of our social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter, and our YouTube channel at Big Blue Avenue. And we're proud to announce our new partnership with BetUS. BetUS is America's favorite sports book, serving customers for 25 plus years where you can bet on all your favorite sports. And if you're interested in joining, you can sign up below with our promo code, join125. You get a 125% sign up bonus up to $2,500 where you can bet on the go anytime, anywhere, and get fast payouts while enjoying all this live betting. That's BetUS, where the game begins. So let's get into the latest on cornerback James Bradbury. This is one of our two major topics in today's video. According to John Fennelly of Giants Wire, now look, I know a lot of people have very mixed opinions on James Bradbury as far as should the Giants cut him, should they trade him, should they keep him around, should they try to restructure or retool the deal, make him take a pay cut, who knows, right? Uh, Giants are not planning to release James Bradbury. I don't think it's going to happen. But I do think they're moving him. I just don't know when. So reportedly the, the team will carry since the league year officially starts today, March 16th, the Giants will carry him as a $2 million of his salary that becomes guaranteed today. Now, this $2 million, keep in mind, folks, is not immediately paid out. What this means is if traded, the team acquiring James Bradbury would take on that responsibility for that $2 million number. So the Giants can be patient as they look for a trade partner for James Bradbury, and this process might be milked out because right now, I think Shane is probably looking for anything, even if it's a late round pick, just something. This could last potentially throughout the spring and throughout the summer months. I had somebody comment on one of the last, on one of the last videos. Bradbury could be a post June first cut. You never know; it could happen. Um, you want to get money available for the draft, and I think with the signings the Giants have made so far, it would make sense that uh, the money that you know they're spending would be the money they would use to keep James Bradbury, despite the reworked deals with, you know, Blake Martinez and Sterling Shepard taking significant pay cuts. You know, Blake's pay cut was $6 million. That's a large chunk of money. But I'm not so sure what's going to happen with James Bradbury, but I do know one thing. Do not expect him to be in a New York Giants uniform come 2022. As sad as that might sound, you know, one of our best quarterbacks this past season. So, Next up, I want to talk about a rising draft prospect that has not only been rising on a lot of draft boards, but has really intrigued the New York Giants, and that is draft prospect James Cook running back out of Georgia. And yes, that is the younger brother of Vikings running back Dalvin Cook. So according to Joe Shane, the Giants are intrigued with Cook's skill set. He met formally with Cook at the Combine, the NFL Combine that is, and will likely take a top 30 visit with the New York Giants. So among the top 30 prospects that the Giants are interested in drafting at this time, he is one of them. So 
it's interesting because the Giants have a lot of high draft picks this year. Being that Cook stock is rising, where might he fall? Well, who knows? The last time the Giants have had top five picks in the top 100 in the draft was 2009. That was the year they selected Hakeem Nix, Clint Sintum, Travis Beckham. Outside of Nix, not the best draft, right? Hoping for better times for Big Blue. But let's go over some of Cook's stats at Georgia. Last season, he was a complimentary back to Zamir White. They pretty much split carries in the backfield. They were pretty much running back 1A and 1B, right? And I think what the Giants are looking for this season, considering Barkley stays, is a complimentary running back that can fill in and step in to be that number one tailback if something happens to Barkley and groom him potentially to be the number one, similar to what the Giants did when Brandon Jacobs, Ahmad Bradshaw, when they were backups, they eventually became starters. The same scenario could be made here for James Cook. Now, Cook had 728 rushing yards this past season with Georgia and seven rushing touchdowns, but the most impressive stat for a guy who's only 5'11", 190, averaged six and a half yards per carry. Now, granted, Georgia just destroyed everybody this year, but Cook hasn't only averaged six and a half yards per carry this year. He's averaged over six yards per carry in each of his four seasons at Georgia since his freshman year. That is very impressive considering he's dealt with a timeshare with guys like Zamir White. I also like that James Cook is a weapon in the passing game. Had four touchdown catches on 27 receptions with the Bulldogs this past season. And, you know, of course, Shane is attending the Georgia Pro Day today. James Cook is one of those players that will be there. And a lot of people are giving this guy a solid day two grade, mid to late third round. I think Cook becomes most valuable for teams that, are looking for a run blocking, uh, a run zone blocking type of scheme, which is what I think the Giants are looking for. You want outside runs. And I mean, yes, you want runs between the tackles as well, but a run zone blocking scheme, which is what the Giants are trying to build. That's why they signed guys like Mark Lewinsky and John Feliciano, two offensive linemen we picked up in free agency that are good blocking in the running game. I think this is going to be a guy who could potentially be heavily used if he's drafted by New York and a good uh, good player in the passing game. Cook offers a similar skill set in his ability as a runner and as a receiver to Alvin Kamara. Now, those are just tools. That's not in particular skill level. Um, I think the guy is tougher to bring down than what you think, looking at his size, and we're going to dive into some highlights from him in just a few moments. The one thing I don't like about James Cook is the exact same thing I don't like about Saquon Barkley. Cook is not very effective as a blocker. Now, can that be improved? Of course. But I'm not so certain what's going to happen with that throughout his pro career. But at this time, I'm going to share my screen, take you through some film here, some plays that I really like from James Cook. There's about five plays or so, and, you know, this is pretty much the first draft prospect I'm really breaking down and there is no sound to this but i will show you all here this is against uh charleston southern and as you can see they're inside their own 30 here and georgia has a very stout offensive line and you can see cook not even one second into the video sees the corner blitz he sees the corner coming in right here and has the ability to shoot the gap knowing he'll get more yards that way following his pit bulls up front And he does that beautifully. And look at all that open green. Look at that speed, too. That was the first play. Now, here's the second play. So they're in a shotgun formation, and they're giving him a halfback draw. Now, for those of you folks who are Giants fans, you know how halfback draws work. Kevin Gilbride used them all the time, and they rarely worked. On first and 10, I don't really want the Giants to be running a halfback draw on first and 10, but this is a nice play here by James Cook. Again, you can see the ability to change direction behind the line of scrimmage. Sees that one of his guards up front is losing their battle. So what does he do? And this is against Kentucky, a much better team, the 11th ranked team in the nation at this point in time. He cuts around. He wiggles his way through some traffic and still finds a way to pick up a first down. And here's an example of some speed, cutting it upfield, makes a guy miss. And this fourth highlight went a little past the frame there, but okay. Apologize, some of these clips start mid-play, but 
you can see he's following his blockers here. This is his left guard that's pulling to block this linebacker right here. And he's just waiting to get ducked. Cook has speed to fill the hole. These two guys here are way too late to get to him. You get one guy blocked here, one guy blocked there. Who's going to stop James Cook? The answer, nobody. Six points for the Bulldogs. And here's a play in him in the receiving game. Very impressive. And I'll go back to that play because I want to show the route that he runs to get open. So he started in the backfield on this play um, to the left of his quarterback. I believe that looks like Stetson Bennett. Again, another play against Kentucky. Third down, right? You want a running back that can catch the football on third down. Um, you see Cook is cutting in towards the middle of the field, and number 19 freshman tight end Brock Bowers is doing a little crossing pattern. So if you're number five here, you're not so sure who to pick because Kentucky's in a zone right now. So James Cook already has his man beat, and he's likely to pick up this first down due to the open space here in the middle as long as Stetson Bennett delivers an accurate ball, which he does. And then, again, there's the speed for six points. Not all running backs can turn that into a touchdown, but Cook can. Now here's a scenario where Cook is lined up here on the right side of the football field, and they are playing press. So it's interesting because I'm not exactly sure who the ball is intended to go to on this play. It looks like Bennett's initial thought is deliver it to the tight end in the middle of the field here, and you see the safety right now it's just an interesting play because they're doubling the near side receiver but cook is one-on-one -on -one here in the top part of your screen and just watch what happens he puts like a little double move on his man the tennessee defensive back trying to figure out where it comes it happens right here try to slow this frame down so he does a little stunt and cuts back out and that tennessee corner is toast I mean, just beautifully done by James Cook. That's all the highlights I have on him, but I expect the Giants to take him at 81 overall if they do draft him, but I think it'll be interesting. This is an intriguing prospect. The Giants need a number two running back behind Saquon Barkley with running back one potential. James Cook is a guy that has both of those traits. I love creating content for you guys in the offseason, and gals, I really, really appreciate all the support that we get. But folks, without further ado, let's go Big Blue.